Hey church family, Pastor Mike here, and this is a life group week, and we are actually going to be getting more into the meat of chapter 2 of Second Peter. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but what we'll be walking through are verses 4 through the first half of verse 10. And what you'll notice as you walk through this passage is basically it's a it's a large if then statement, um, and and you, you probably remember that perhaps from English or when you were writing essays or whenever you're going through any kind of uh, composition that it is a it is a tool it's a literary tool that can be used to build up and make a case for something so if this a causality case like if this if this then this and the fact is what you have here is um, him talking about. You have Peter talking about, breathed out by the Spirit, the um, examples of what verses 1 through 3 are talking about, especially verse 3. So if we go back to verse 3 and it says, And in their greed they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. So he's talking here about those who are teaching falsely. False teachers will be judged. And then what he does in our section that we're talking about this week is basically give examples of the fact that you know god has enacted justice god has kept faithfulness uh, in the view of others he has judged the wicked and you can imagine that a church would be discouraged if it looks like that those who are teaching falsely are succeeding and doing well it actually becomes a point of encouragement um, not vengeance but a hope of encouragement and endurance to actually remember that historically God has been just. God has shut the mouth of the wicked, even destroyed others who have caused others to stumble and fall. And the examples he gives are very important, I think. He talks first about basically fallen angels, those that made the choice, and um, you know that third of the angels that rebelled against the Lord, and that it was instituted exactly what would happen to them. They would be consigned to hell. So you have that idea of kind of cosmic rebellion, which all sin is, but in the most uh, obvious of senses uh, with the those the fallen angels. Then he gives the example of Noah and those who you know died in the flood, and in that flood account, how he even though he judged the ungodly, he also delivered the godly. And then he talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, how Lot was righteous, but Lot was in the midst of being inundated with sin and the fallenness of sin all around him. He was feeling and, uh, and in a sense, experiencing the effects of the fallenness that was all around him. It was even clouding his judgment. It was clouding his understanding of what was right and good and true. So even in that sense, so you have basically this cosmic... Um, kind of rebellion against the authority of God. And then you have just downright disobedience of not responding to repentance, which Noah was a preacher, and he would proclaim repentance to the people, and they refused. And so then they were judged. But then with with Sodom and Gomorrah, you have rampant immorality on display, and of all types. And in that, again, we see God judging, God judging, God judging. But in the midst of that, there is also a deliverance. There is also a deliverance that that for those that are following God and his truths, that he will deliver his own. And so there's there's a twofold encouragement in this, which is we can be encouraged that God is not slow in keeping promises to judge, and nor is he slow in keeping his promise to deliver. What we go through in this life is very short. It's very brief, even if it lasts for years. It's very brief in the scope of eternity. Any suffering that we go through. So even should the Lord not deliver us to a better more pleasing circumstance while in this world, we can trust that he will absolutely accomplish his justice. He will absolutely see judgment all the way through, but he also knows how to deliver his own. And that is the best news for us all. If you are in Christ Jesus, you know that he will deliver you unto himself one day. Now, if you're not in Christ, you need to understand something. That even though you might think, well, I'm not as bad as those in Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm not as bad as those who were in Noah's day. You know, I'd probably try to get on or something. Um, Look, the idea, though, here is that go back to remember the very beginning of this letter. 
the only good standing that anyone has before God, the only aversion to judgment being cast upon us and we having to face all of the consequence, the only one who stands in between that is the person of Christ. His death, burial, resurrection, ascension, his righteously lived life, his perfectly lived life is the only thing that pleases the Father in the long run. And then his death, burial, resurrection, all conquering the power of death, which was a tool of Satan to be used as a consequence. And he has delivered us from it all. And one day, even though we may be suffering quite a bit now, one day he will deliver us from all, not just sin, but all the effects of sin, including death, including just wrong thinking, including so many other things that you probably would never think to imagine in how we've been affected by sin. So God is not slow. So be encouraged. Be encouraged that God is the one who will bring about justice. God is the one who, even though you may be wronged and have great difficulty, he is the one who will show himself to be faithful and good and true. So as you read through the passage, I just want to encourage you to kind of think in those terms that God knows what he's doing. And if he's trustworthy, keep trusting him. And it's always good and right to be good and right, okay? And to do the right thing. And even though the world may respond to that very negatively, we can trust that the Lord will support and honor it. And one day, we will not have to worry about taking a stand ever again because we'll simply be standing with him in his presence all day, every day for eternity. So I hope you'll be encouraged. I hope you know how to encourage each other with this as we walk through this. These, these are kind of high high weeds in chapter two a little bit, not because it's hard to understand as much as it's just, it's just no fun to talk about judgment. But the fact is, that's the contrary nature of our deliverance. We need to understand and know what we were bound for so that it produces and bears in us the kind of gratitude and witnessing of his glory that it should, that we are amazed that he would save any of us at all. All right, well, I hope that's uh, helpful to you and beneficial, and may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. All right, take care.